Hi, everyone. Today is the Wednesday of Holy Week. It is March 31st, and our focus for today is Betrayed and Redeemed. So hear these words from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 21 through 32. And even though it stops at 32, I'm going to continue to read through 35, um, and you'll see why at the end. Okay. After, these, after he said these things, Jesus was deeply disturbed and terrified. No, he wasn't terrified. He was testified. After he said these things, Jesus was deeply disturbed and testified, I assure you, one of you will betray me. His disciples looked at each other and con confused about which one of them he was talking about. One of the disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was at Jesus' side. Simon Peter nodded at him to get him to ask Jesus who he was talking about. Leaning back toward Jesus, this disciple asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, it's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread once I have dipped it in the bowl. Then he dipped the piece of bread and gave it to Judas. Simon Iscariot's son. After Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him, and Jesus told him, to, and Jesus told him, what you are about to do, go and do quickly. Because no one sitting at the table uh, understood why Jesus said this to him. Some thought that since Judas was the one who kept the money bag, Jesus told him, go and buy what we need for the feast. That's what they assumed. Or that he should give something to the poor. So when Judas took the bread, he left immediately, and it was night. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, now the human one has been glorified and glorif and God has glorified has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify the human one in himself and will glorify him immediately. Little children, I am with you for a little while longer. You will look for me and just, but just as I told the Jewish leaders, I also tell you now, where I'm going, you can't come. I give you a new commandment, love each other. Just as I have loved you, so you must also love each other. In the same way, this is how everyone will know that you are my disciples when you love each other. Amen. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of God's holy word. That last part, the commandment that we love one another, um, is a part of the Monday Thursday story. But tomorrow, which is Monday Thursday, we won't be reading that as part of the lesson. We'll be uh, focused on a different passage. So I wanted to include it for today. Nicole Massey Martin focuses our attention to uh, verse 21. After saying this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, very truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me. It's a painful experience to be betrayed. The process of building trust takes so long that betrayal seems to cut to the core. This is especially true for those close to us. 
Although we can stand being forsaken by those on the fringe, it is agonizing when a friend turns on us. True friendships are often fortified in the furnace of opposition. And the disciples had plenty of that. They survived being criticized for leaving their careers and to follow this untrained rabbi. They endured the shocking witnessing of countless miracles they could have never imagined. They even persevered through name calling, being ostracized by the religious leaders and being considered frauds by everyone else. Their experiences bonded them together like glue. With all they had left behind, they were more than just friends. They were like family. But during one of the most intimate family gatherings, Jesus announced to his brothers that one of them would betray him. Who would dare disrupt the family bond? A better question might be, who wouldn't? We know that Judas betrayed Christ in the most obvious way, but every single one of his disciples betrayed him as well. In the heat of torture, this ragtag family fell apart, each one deserting the Savior in some way. It is wise for us to consider the many ways we too have betrayed our Lord. We may not have all been as blatant as Judas, but we have all troubled Christ by our decision, by our desertion. Yet the cross provides a powerful anecdote for those who betray. Forgiveness and mercy are ours shed through the blood of Jesus, making us family once again. Let us honor Christ's sacrifice by naming our betrayal and laying down our shame at the foot of the cross. Then we can emerge as family, as a family, not of betrayers, but of those who are redeemed. Amen. One of the things I miss about um, our worship service in terms of the ways in which my tradition, my UCC tradition um, worships, is that we would often have a prayer of confession. Um, for some churches, they only did it on the Sundays uh, where they had communion, and in most UCC churches, that's once a month. Um, in other churches, they would begin the worship service um, or shortly at, you know, very soon in the beginning of the service, um, have the prayer of confession. Always followed by an assurance of God's love, an assurance of pardon. In each of the situations, in each of the circumstances, each of the congregations, um, it was a collective, it was a corporate prayer of confession. And um, and a mutual, in some ways, mutual assurance of pardon. Um, and I kind of miss that. And so I want to share with you um, one of the prayers of confession uh, that are often used. So let us confess our sins to God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, 
Amen. The assurance of pardon follows that. And it is, Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. There is something really powerful, I think, about confessing our sins before one another and certainly before God. And what is even more powerful is receiving that assurance of God's love, that assurance of pardon. We don't do that in our congregation, but that's okay. Um, it is something that, uh, that we may do at some point in the future, um, at least on occasion, but we'll see. We, that part's not relevant. What I want us to think about today is the ways in which we can confess and always, always, always be assured of God's forgiveness and God's pardon, God's mercy and God's grace, that God loves us and God will do everything to keep us safe. So I want to offer that for you today. And that's not, that's about it. We talked about um, the need for forgiveness. We talked about um, the ways in which we recognize that, um, that sometimes we do things that we ought not do. Um, for me, some of that was holding a grudge that I had from long ago um, that I need to let go of. And, uh, and then I'm actually able to let go of now that I've actually acknowledged that I still hold it. I can let it go. It doesn't, it doesn't serve me or anyone else. Um, so as we head into these last few days of Holy Week, Monday, Thursday, where we are reminded of the commandment to love one another, where Jesus will wash the feet of the disciples and institute the Lord's Supper. Good Friday, where we remember Jesus's execution, his death, uh, where we remember that he was rushed into a borrowed tomb. Uh, so that he could be buried before the sundown, before the Sabbath began. And Holy Saturday, where we just wait, we wait and hold on because we don't yet know if the promise of resurrection is real. And then we get to Sunday, where the promise of resurrection is indeed guaranteed, where we see it happen right in front of us. One of the things that I will probably say again as these next several days go is that um, for every Good Friday, every Good Friday we go through, every bad situation, every heartbreak, every, um, every hurt that we encounter, there is always resurrection. There is always a resurrection Sunday. There is new life always available to us. So you'll hear that again. But for right now, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>